A number of you have asked me what kind of computer you need to run Planet Zoo, or whether your current computer is going to be able to run the game like I do in these videos, or whether it's just going to melt your computer altogether. So today I wanted to show you what kind of settings I use in the game, as well as what computer I use and what computers I've used in the past and how these have run Planet Zoo on the channel. Now I play the game in 1440p, which means that the requirements for the computer are going to be a lot harder graphically to run it than if you're running it on a 1080p monitor. And considering if you if you have a 4K monitor, that's going to be a much higher demand on your graphics card because it's going to have to do four times as many pixels as a 1080p monitor. So that's going to have a serious impact on your computer. Now these are the graphics settings that I use for Planet Zoo, which as you can see have everything on its highest setting. Everything is set as, as high as it can be but this isn't necessary and if your computer's struggling with planet zoo the first thing i'd recommend to look at is shadows and whether you need the detail to be very high or high or medium or even low now i've just turned the shadow settings to low and this is the impact it's had on the game you can see that this still looks amazing like the game is still absolutely beautiful and if you look at the animals up close they still look incredible but the graphic settings are on low. This is what would happen if I turned it to very high, which is the opposite end of the spectrum. This is everything on very high. So you can see that the shadows are definitely uh, more defined, but I don't know whether that's the thing that you're gonna care about when you're playing the game. And whilst I'm not an expert in this field, I would really recommend you look at shadows and see, what, see the kind of impact it has on your computer by reducing them. I'd also look at the difference between high and low weather effects and whether it's really necessary for you to have, you know, ultra realistic rain when it's going or whether standard rain would be fine. Now, one thing you probably will notice is the difference in texture resolution. So if I put textures on low and apply that, you can probably see a, a noticeable difference in the game. Like these rocks here kind of look a bit more 1980s video game and a bit less 2023, but it's still very possible and especially when you're zoomed out you really aren't going to notice these differences it's just when you're up close and they can have a massive impact on on your computer and whether you're able to run the game so looking at that versus having them on high obviously on high the rocks look much much better much more pronounced you can see the detail in them they're not very pixelated but again when you're zoomed out they look almost the same to me and maybe it's a personal preference but I don't think you need it. The, the same if you look over here in the water, um, you don't need water reflections on. It's really nice to have on, but you don't actually need to have water reflections. Or if you do, have them on medium. You know, uh, the difference between what you can see there versus on ultra, obviously you can notice it, but it's, it's not something that's gonna really impact your ability to play and enjoy the game. So if your current computer is struggling to run the game, I just recommend looking at your graphics settings and seeing if you can play around with a few things and notice the impact that it's gonna have on your game. Because honestly, as beautiful as, you know, as these trees look and these animals look when they're up close, it's not an essential change <laughs> and the game is very very passable on the lowest settings as an example i've put this exact same scene it's just started to rain i've put everything on lowest and this is how the game looks now this is how the game looks on low and personally this is where i feel like it would start for me. I don't think I'd play the game on lowest just because the absence of any shadows makes everything look kind of strange and dystopian. Um, it doesn't really feel like much of a simulation if you don't have light. But on low, the game still looks really good in my opinion. Now, if we move this up to medium, again, I feel like you can see a noticeable difference, but you wouldn't necessarily notice it if it weren't there. Now we move on up to high, and you can see the, the texture quality is massively improved and the reflections in the water are a lot better, um, in my opinion. I think the rain may also be slightly improved, but it's not something that you're going to notice. You know, like this looks incredible with them going in the water and everything, but the game is very playable on medium or low. And finally, everything on ultra. And this is obviously the game at peak performance. You can see everything as high texture as it, as it could possibly be. I mean, the water looks amazing, but it's whether it's necessary for you, and that's a completely subjective point. 
Now this is the kind of settings that I use when I record these videos, but I, I think this, hopefully this has shown you that there's not a massive difference between low and ultra when, when it really boils down to it. It's just personal preference. So that's the decision that you're going to have to make. Now, another setting that you can play with is in your guest settings, and this is limiting the maximum number of guests. Now on the franchise playthrough I have of our EcoZoo series, I think we currently have about 5,000 guests. Oh yeah, you can see down the bottom here. Uh, we have about 5,000 guests. I've not turned any limit on, but as as it kind of approaches the, the three, 4,000, you, your computer starts to, to notice it more. You know, you could always limit the guests to 2,000 and it would probably have a massive impact on the demands of your computer. I would, I would seriously consider whether you need, you know, 5,000 guests or 10,000 guests in your zoo or whether the zoo would look absolutely fine with 2,000. And I think just playing around with these settings can help you really achieve what's best for you in your situation and not not make you go out and buy a whole new computer just to up one graphic setting on a game. <laughs> so now let's show you what kind of rig I'm using currently. So my computer uses an NVIDIA RTX 3080 graphics card with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. And that may sound like completely alien language to you, but in, in essence, it's quite a powerful graphics card. And graphics card is gonna be the most important component for a game like Planet Zoo that's so graphically demanding. You don't need a graphics card this powerful. And it's by no means the most powerful cards out there now. Frontier Developments state on their Steam page for Planet Zoo that the minimum graphics card you need is an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 770 two gigabyte card. So this is obviously much older and much less powerful than the one that I'm using currently. And they recommend that you use a GTX 1070 card. When I started out, I believe I was using a GTX 1080 card and I was playing the game absolutely fine. It was just, you couldn't get into those higher graphic settings and have a, a medium to large zoo, in my personal opinion when I was playing, it wasn't as enjoyable an experience. And that's not to say that having that level of, of tech is gonna completely ruin your experience with the game. It's just that if you wanna play on the maximum settings or you wanna record videos for YouTube or something like that, you're probably gonna want a more powerful card. Now, a card I would highly recommend for, for this game is the RTX 2060 card. Um, that's what I used to use on the channel back when I was recording the Winter Wonder Zoo series. And, and that card's absolutely fine. I chose to upgrade my computer mainly to do with editing because I wanted to improve the editing capabilities of my computer as well as recording while I'm playing. Because you have to consider that whilst you're seeing me play the game, my computer is also using NVIDIA's recording technology to record it whilst playing, which has a demand on the computer. And what I believe is the next most important part is what your processor is. Now, I'm currently currently using a beast of a processor, which is the Ryzen 9 3950X processor. Now this is a ridiculous processor that I've only bought for editing purposes. It's way overpowered for what you need. Frontier Developments recommend something like an Intel i7 4770K or an AMD Ryzen 5 1600. Now I would actually probably agree with that in this case. I was previously using an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 and those are fairly cheap on the market now although cheap is a relative term because computer parts are never cheap. Um, but that was running the game absolutely fine. And again, that's what I was using during the Winter Wonder Zoo series. Finally, as far as RAM, Frontier Developments recommend that you use at least eight gigabytes of RAM and they recommend 16 gigabytes of RAM. My current rig uses 64 gigabytes of RAM. The users is probably a very strong term because I doubt it's actually using all of it when playing the game. And 16 gigabytes is what I used previously and seemed absolutely fine. Now, it's it's a bit hard to prescribe what you actually need for this for the game because all of these components work together and it's not just that improving your RAM is going to suddenly make the game work. That There's going to be a, a limiting factor on one of your components. And I don't want to talk too much about the hardware itself because I, I know that for a lot of people it just goes straight over their head. But it's just to recognize that the system I'm using currently is an absolute beast of a machine. Whereas the previous computer I had was still quite powerful but kind of in the mid range. And I'd suggest that you don't even need something as strong as that. 
that. I would imagine that the game would run fine on something like an AMD Ryzen 5 3600 processor, 8 to 16 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA 1660 graphics card. That would honestly be my personal recommendation. If a friend asked me what kind of computer would I need to run a game like this, that's what I would say. Obviously, it's completely subjective and up to you what kind of computer you have or want to use. And hopefully they'll port this game to console soon. And then the requirements, I'm sure, will go way down because they always manage to optimize it for console. But that, that's the current computer I'm using. So I hope it's been helpful to you in some way. Now, in order to record videos, I'm also using the Wave 3 microphone. And I love this microphone. I have to say, previously I was using a very cheap one off of Amazon and I feel like the quality of the audio has gone up a lot since I got the Wave 3 microphone. And I actually use the low profile arm, which is really cool because it goes underneath your computer. So when you're recording, you can kind of, you don't have this massive boom arm in the way <laughs> when you're trying to, when you're trying to record and move around, which for a, kind of a gaming channel is really helpful. Now, as far as cooling my processor, I, you absolutely don't need something this expensive or ridiculous, but I'm currently using the Corsair IQ H170i Elite LCD display, um, which is a 420 millimeter uh, all-in-one liquid cooler and it has a ridiculous amount of personalization in that I can change the display on my uh, on my cooler to have whatever I want. I can even have GIFs or, or images. Um, it's absolutely unnecessary but for me I wanted something that was fun and I needed a decent cooler for a processor this powerful. Now this may not be something you're even worried about but I thought I'd mention it because I know that there will be some people out there who want to know exactly what kind of computer I have and they'd want to know about the cooling as well. So the final thing I'd say about my computer system is that I'm using predominantly SSD storage and for this I'm using the Samsung 980 Pro 2 terabyte SSD and this is a very expensive SSD and you absolutely don't need one that powerful but I would recommend that you get at least one SSD rather than a hard drive because games like Planet Zoo or games generally uh, are so much more demanding now than they ever used to be and it can massively reduce reduce your load times if you're using a, a solid state drive rather than a hard drive. Now the desk I use when I record these videos is the FlexiSpot E7 standing desk and FlexiSpot have been kind enough to sponsor this video by sending me another E7 standing desk in white with a bamboo top. Now standing desks are amazing if you work from home or you make YouTube videos or you just play a lot of video games at your desk because it enables you to stand up while you're doing those things or sit down interchangeably so it's a lot better for your health and I was finding that I wasn't getting up all day until I actually got one of these standing desk and I do highly recommend them. They're really good quality and it's as easy as just pressing a button on the system to change the height of the desk. They've even got four presets so you can set them already and then just one click of a button and it will go straight to your preset which is really really handy. They also have this really cool feature where if you have something under the desk like a box or something and you put the desk to go down it'll actually stop before it hits something that's underneath it so you don't end up crushing something important that you've got underneath your desk or obviously if you had like a person under there they wouldn't get hit by the desk and for those of you with kids they've got a child lock button on it as well which if you press it um you then doesn't matter what other buttons you press until you unlock it you can't change the height of the desk which is as i said great if you've got kids or just clumsy people who walk into things around the house they also have a really good cable management system underneath the desk which i have failed to use in my previous setup with my e7 desk in black but it's a really cool feature to have to tidy up your cables so thanks again to flexispot for sponsoring this video they actually have a summer sale going on at the minute so if you're interested in getting one you might be able to save yourself some money with the link in the description. So that's everything I use to play Planet Zoo on computer like you've seen on the channel. Please let everyone know in the comments what computer you have and what your experience of the game has been like. I really hope this video has helped you in determining what kind of computer you need to play Planet Zoo and if you've liked it please do give it a like it really helps the channel out and I'll see you in the next one.